So Tasha K and Jenny Wynn have both recently made statements regarding their situations. And I'm left with questions, albeit questions in different directions, but questions nonetheless. With Tasha K, this seems to be just the beginning. And with Jenny Wynn, she won't let us hear the end. Yet both of these ladies seem to need a big lesson in accountability. Can we talk? I don't do regrets. I'm trying to learn from my lessons, but do I get it yet? I want to set an example, but I'm not sure I didn't handle all my demons. I'm thinking that I should court a vet. I fight for all respect. I'm working overtime to keep up my head. I understand I'll get the love when I'm dead. So my focus is red. Choose the black, I'd almost keep it me chosen. I've been the token, now the back is ahead. All my soapbox chucking. What's going on, everybody? Welcome and welcome back to Georgia Carolina, your gated and racism-free community where we personalize culture and entertainment and then have a conversation based on self-discovery and growth. I am your pop culture coordinator of all things inclusion and awareness, Jordan Renee, and I'm happy to have you back for another video. All right, so Tasha K and Jenny both made their statements yesterday, and I don't think I have enough to separate these issues into two separate videos. So at first I thought about lumping them together just because I didn't think I had enough to really say because these situations are so cut and dry, they don't necessarily need an extensive dialogue. But as I continue to think about it, I realized that another reason why I wanted to talk about both of these situations in the same video was because my point in my opinion of both of their situations is the same. They both need a huge lesson in accountability. They both need to find some responsibility and accountability for their actions. For example, I watched Tasha K's video and what I took from that video was that she masqueraded her going on a malicious vendetta against a celebrity as a crusade against the challenges against free speech. What I took from that video was that she is now doubling back on her admittance of her at, of her knowing that the things that she put out about Cardi B was false. What I took from that video was her masking an attack on a woman she doesn't know as an after school special that is catering to educating the children on the consequences of drugs, sex and rock and roll, basically. She took this 12 minutes and 20 seconds worth of video to make it seem like like she's doing something for the people. I don't understand. I've never heard her make this situation about the greater good. You are not Robin Hooding for YouTubers, Tasha. It feels this is another thread that seems to be coming in both of these ladies' stories is that it almost seems like they are throwing things in our face and expecting us to just stupidly and blindly just follow whatever it is that they're saying with no question or critical thinking. Tasha, there is video evidence of you saying you knew that the story was false and you put it up to reassert that you can make a story go up regardless. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh, child. I'm gassy. But there's video evidence of you saying that. There's video evidence, or there was, I don't know if this video is still up because I believe I saw this video on your actual channel, of you holding up what looked like to be the cease and desist that Cardi sent you and said that you wipe your ass with it. Nowhere in any of these 20, 28 videos that you put out about Cardi B that I ever hear about your crusade for the greater good when it comes to challenging the free speech of independent digital content creators. 
had you gone with that angle from the beginning, you would have had a better case in court, to be perfectly honest, because you built your platform on you don't post stories without verifiable factual sources. So had you stuck with that and actually been able to prove with receipts what you had, then this would have been something completely different. But the fact that now you're making a vendetta against a, a rapper, a crusade in the fight of YouTube content creators? This is interesting. This was an interesting take. But this just seemed like a play for sympathy. Like, it, it seemed like a play for... It seemed like you trying to take this verdict as somebody trying to, you know, make an example of you. As if you're on this crusade for the greater good. That's the best way that I can put it. It's like you're Robin Hooding for YouTubers in your mind. Now, mind you, the points that she was making in her statement made complete sense. And that's the insidious part of it. What she was saying made a lot of sense. The things that she said that she was doing for digital creators made so much sense. However, her actions were never indicative of that course of action. So I don't understand how you can admit that the very thing you're being sued for is true. Lose your case. Come online to make a statement and basically say that you were set up. You knew you were gonna lose. You took it to trial anyway. You got the money to pay for it. You're filing for an appeal. I'm not gonna diagnose you, but I see why people are calling you a narcissist. I'm not gonna diagnose you, but I see exactly why people call people are calling you a narcissist because that, that frame of thinking is... I don't understand that. And in saying that, Jenny Wen, your frame of thinking has me all the way fucked up. I don't know what you were thinking, but you have a lot of nerve. You have a lot of audacity. You have a lot of unmitigated gall bringing your ass on Instagram live. Mind you, you blocked me so I couldn't see the live. I... I am under the assumption that you have seen my content or have been made aware of my content. Hi, how you doing? I hope you see this too. I believe this, if I was petty enough to diagnose people, this I would probably call narcissism because you came on here with a black person and you backpedaled and pussy popped so much that we thought we were watching BET Uncut. You came on here to say that these posts didn't represent you, even though they were on your page, you, you're you taking full responsibility for them. See, I'm getting ready to dissect and debunk a lot of the shit you said. So just strap yourselves in. You said that these posts you you said your page was hacked right first you said it was your social media manager then you said your page was hacked then these posts don't represent you but you're not condemning the posts at all instead of condemning the post and acknowledging that they're wrong and that they're racist and that you don't approve of things like that being on a facebook that you allegedly deleted you instead defend your Republican politics. I will reaffirm, racism and politics are not synonymous. They have nothing to do with each other. And if you wanna challenge that, I, I ask you this question. When you are at the polls, explain to me in the comments what somebody's skin color has to do with the way that you are voting on political issues. 
explain to me how skin color is a variable when you are deciding how your vote will be swayed when it comes to policies. Explain to me how justifying politics backing up a display of, dis of disdain for a specific culture or skin tone is not racist. Justifying that that's okay? Explain to me how that's not racist. Explain to me how taking that stance is not racist. Once again, she's using her political views to reinforce racism. Now, mind you, her, while we're talking about social media, her social media manager spoke out and said that the page was hacked and this, that, and the third, blah, blah, blah. She never posted this. But to that, I say this. She already lied in the first apology that she posted the same day that this came out and said that she deleted that page a year ago. So if she deleted that page, was it her that deleted it or was it you? Second of all, we know that that's a lie because the day that the post came out, we were still able to access that very same YouTube page because there were links with the post. There was at least one definitely, but there were links that linked it back to that personal Facebook page. So the page was never deleted. Three, the posts were still on the Facebook page the day all of this came out. So you never deleted the Facebook. The page was still active. The posts were still there. So I'm questioning you as a social media manager. Here's the thing. The, pay, the, the day that all of this came out, the page got deleted. So whoever had access to that page had the access to delete it the day that everybody found out that those posts were on it. But somehow y'all didn't have the access to delete all of these posts before then or to just actually delete the Facebook page. So explain to me how now all of a sudden the whole page is gone. Yet when she puts up that post, we're still able to see the page. So all of this is a lie. Every single bit of this is a lie. If any of this was true, then you should have had your social media man you, you should have had your social media manager sitting up there taking responsibility with you instead of your random ass chicken George Uncle Tom ass coonery friend black friend sunk in place. But you got to remember, this is supposed to be the new and improved Jenny. Because she said when she deleted that Facebook post or, or when she allegedly deleted that page, she deleted it because she was made aware that those posts were bad and they were negative and she wanted to learn and do better. So she deleted that page. So the page was never deleted. The posts were still up there. It got deleted when the public found out. And you said that you deleted it because you were made aware that the posts were racist. So now you're going back and basically showing your slip, telling us that you never intended on being or learning from this. This is not a lesson of anti-racism. This is a lesson of deflection because I'm going on television and I know that this is bad. I know that black people are not going to like this. I don't think that there's anything wrong with it, but I'm, but it's what I want to post. But I want to go on television and not get backlash. So let me private the page, private the page, but not delete anything. So finding your social media manager and having her speaking out, if you had her, if you didn't, if she just chose to speak out, you dumb as hell because you made yourself look sketchy as hell why did you never delete the post why was the facebook page still active and if the page was hacked then explain to me why were the post still there when y'all got access back to it when did you get access back to it oh the day when everybody just happened y'all just happened to find the facebook password the day that the post just gets spread across the internet y'all just happened to discover the password right Oh, okay. Mind you, again, she said that she posted these posts 
to combat and speak out against violence. To that, I say this. Every single thing that you posted incited violence. From the cartoon strip saying that the number of stickers on the back of your car were, were the numbers of rioters you hit. From the post of Ken Jong saying that if people followed orders, they wouldn't get shot. The post of saying that, you're, that you don't want police to get reformed because... Black people should have taught their kids how to not not commit crimes. Even the post that you tried to put out to cover this in Republicanism. Um, hopefully the vaccine is in pill form so you can shove it up the 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 Democrats' ass. Violence. Even your political posts were violent. Everything you posted perpetuated violence. Every single thing. Here's the thing, what you should have just go ahead and admitted was that you weren't speaking out against violence towards minorities. What you were speaking out about is violence against police officers. What she was trying to say was that these posts were not speaking out against police brutality. They were speaking in favor of Blue Lives Matter. That she didn't lie about, I guess. That was just, that just went over our heads. We took that too literally. Once again, she thinks we're stupid. So I don't understand how this was supposed to be your truth. What was the first apology? Was the apology not your truth? I mean, you did spend the apology defending yourself and trying to explain why you did something that you are apologizing for, therefore conflicting with the necessary, conflicting with the necessity to make an apology in the first place. If you think that there's something that you can say that is in defense or that you need to clarify when making an apology, then clearly you don't think that you need to make an apology. When you make an apology, you don't explain why you did it. It's just wrong. That's why if apologies don't make sense. I'm sorry, if. You wouldn't be making an apology if you didn't do anything wrong. So why do you say if I hurt you? Clearly, you wouldn't be apologizing if you didn't hurt someone. You wouldn't be apologizing if these posts weren't wrong. But what she was saying was that she was speaking out against violence towards police officers. She was speaking out against minorities, specifically black people, fighting back. She was speaking out in favor of police brutality. She thinks that police brutality is just animal control. I don't feel like there was any admission of guilt. Drop down in the comments and let me know if you disagree with me in any way. Because none of this makes any sense to me. I don't feel like there was any accountability in anything you said. In fact, you came on here and made more excuses for why you did something instead of just coming on here and blatantly stating that what you did was wrong. Anybody who is trying to apologize does not spend most of the time making excuses for what they did or trying to get you to understand why they did it. Because if there was something to understand in the reasoning of why they did it, you wouldn't need to be apologizing. I don't understand. I don't understand how you you can deliberately post all of these things about black people or if you were hacked, leave all of these things about black people up on said page. Because either way, if you weren't hacked, this was you. If you were hacked, you left the post up. So either way, they still reflect your personal beliefs because you left them on your page. Now they represent you. Hey, this is Editing Jordan. I just wanted to mention she reposted all of these posts, not uploaded them herself, meaning that she has to surround herself with like-minded people like this. This wasn't a one-time offense. She was posting this for six months. Mind you, why would a social media manager be resharing anything, especially something so vile like this? Especially when a social media manager is supposed to create positive engagement for your business. Remember, she was managing her personal social media. 
This was a personal Facebook page. Why would you need a social media manager for your personal Facebook? Confusing. Especially when, didn't she sell all those med spas that she was allegedly still managing? Or still manages to this day? What's the story on that? Or rather, what's today's story on that? Hmm. Just curious. You left too many holes. You left way too many holes. You shot somebody and left the gun with your fingerprints laying next to the body. That's literally what this is. Like, why did you even bother to do this? Because we got no more from this than we did from that first BS apology. All you did was double down on your lack of accountability. I told you before, there was nothing we needed to hear from you. There was nothing that you needed to say. All you had to do was just move on. Especially if you were not going to come on here and make an apology and just leave it at that. Why do you feel the need to explain yourself if you are allegedly claiming that you are accepting wrongdoing? If you are trying to make amends, if you are trying to take responsibility, then why are you constantly trying to get us to understand your reasoning? Anybody who is trying to get somebody to understand their reasoning does not think that what they're doing is wrong. So apparently, if the posts weren't posted by you, you still think that they're okay because you're defending them with the stance of being a Republican. So not only are you affirming that you are in alignment with what these posts imply, represent, and directly say, you're also lumping in all Republicans and all people from Long Beach, California, with that alignment. Long Beach, can you chime in? Long Beach, is this how y'all roll? This how y'all do it? Because she basically said, I'm not racist, I'm from Long Beach. So this is how people from Long Beach act? This is what people from Long Beach post? This type of behavior represents Long Beach? This type of behavior represents Republicans? I'm just asking. I'm not even being, like, I'm not being accusatory. I'm not saying that I am speaking or saying one way or the other. I'm literally asking a question. Is this what you're trying to say? Because this is what you're implying. This is what I'm taking from what you're saying. You saying, I'm not racist, I'm from Long Beach. Like, okay, what does Long Beach have to do with it? What does your zip code have to do with whether you're racist or not? Racism is taught inside the home. And even if you did learn it within your, your community, like, not everybody in that community is racist unless you just live in a specific clan commune. Like, I'm trying to make sense of everything that you're saying because anything that I'm trying to say to piece together some sort of conclusion leads right back to racism. Anywhere I'm going with this leads back to racism. No matter what way I try to analyze what you're saying you're you're sounding racist at the end of it regardless like at the end of the day everything that you're doing everything that you have done everything that you have said is giving off real jenny at the bonfire with the clan hood it's giving real jenny with the cross in the open field it's giving very racist Everything you're doing is giving off racist. Everything you're doing is doubling down on racist. It is just more and more racist behavior. And you think we don't see that. You thought having a black person there was going to all was going to automatically just absolve you of us thinking that you're racist. When are y'all going to realize that the moment you say I have black friends or I dated black guys, I, I automatically think you're racist.
And if you say you dated black men, I I automatically think that you're a fetishist. Sucking black dick does not absolve you of racism. So, with that being said, I hope that these ladies actually suffer consequences for these actions. I hope that the loss of Tasha Kay's lawsuit hits her in a way that is effective enough for her to rethink her position of thinking. I don't know if it has to be monetarily. I don't know if it has to be her viewers turning on her because they have seen this display as a complete blatant lack of integrity or what? Like, I don't know what it takes, but I hope that Tasha K feels the consequences that she needs to feel to rethink this positioning when it comes to her actions. Because everything that she did when it came to Cardi B was malicious and she blatantly stated so. She blatantly said she was being malicious towards Cardi B. And there was never a mention of her doing anything to basically Robin Hood for the kids and Robin Hood for YouTube creators. And if that's the case, why would you stake that entire crusade on the back of Cardi B? Why would you put that entire crusade on the back of Cardi B? That is confusing to me. If that's the case, I would think that you would be talking about the industry, not just one rapper, not just one woman. Cardi B is that influential to you that you feel like going after and taking down Cardi B is all of a sudden going to take down the influence of sex, drugs and rock and roll. I, I, I don't I, I don't know what that means. Like what did putting out these videos on Cardi B mean towards your end game in that regard? I genuinely want to know the methodology that you have with that. How did you think doing these videos the way that you did them, saying the things that you said, posting the things that you post, how did you feel like that was strategically applicable to the end goal that you came on this video and stated that you were trying to get to? Because the things that you're saying and the actions you chose to commit to get there are completely contradictory. And then to target all of that energy towards one person and to make the reasoning behind that a greater issue that is about a community or that is about a generation of children is even more perplexing. I'm so... Everything that both of you are doing is so confusing to me. Are you really thinking out these actions? Either one of you, Jenny or Tasha, are either one of you thinking any of this stuff out? Because I am so confused by the actions you're making. Y'all genuinely think the steps y'all took were supposed to come out in an, come out in a position that was your favor. And every action that you took was completely contradictory to the result you wanted. Everything you did was contradictory to the to the desired goal that you said you wanted. What Tasha K said in her video and the actions she said that she made are like apples and biscuits. Like It's like broccoli and sour patch kids. Like those two things aren't even in the same food group, the same, like they're not even in the same thought process. It's not even apples and oranges. It's literally like peaches and hot wings. Like I'm confused. Like it's literally being a vegan and being a cannibal. Like I'm so confused. The what she said, her goal was last night and the shit that she did 
I don't understand. Like, I need a video of you explaining how that was supposed to work. I need a methodology breakdown to explain how, how we were supposed to get from A to B. And Jenny, I don't need to hear shit else from you at all. I don't want to hear nothing else from you. You have stated exactly what you are. You are a Republican racist. And there is nothing else to say about it. Employing black people does not absolve you of racism. Fucking black people does not absolve you of racism. Hear me clearly, Ramona Singer. Everybody else. Luann, your ass is real questionable too, Miss Diana Ross. Hear me well. Y'all need to pay the fuck attention seriously. Don't just pay attention to the consequences of others. What y'all need to be paying attention to is why this shit is resulting in consequences. Pay attention to the severity of the actions. Pay attention to what these cons what these actions are actually saying and doing. I could just be talking into the void right now because it really seems like people like y'all really don't give a fuck what real motherfuckers got to say when it comes to having morality and integrity and, you know, character, couth, if you will. But, um, you know, I have a platform and I have plenty of opinions. So here we are and here we go. In that case, with that being said, thank you guys for coming back to another meeting. I am Jordan Renee. I am your pop culture coordinator of all things inclusion and awareness here in your gated but racism free community, Georgia, Carolina. I hope that I've personalized something from culture and entertainment that is meaningful, impactful, and educational or informative to you. And I hope that you've been encouraged to go along a journey of self-discovery, growth, even just reflection. So with that being said, if you like the video, like the video, share, subscribe, do all of the things, the things, the things, the things, and I'll holla at y'all in, in, in the next one. If y'all can solve this math problem, hit me in the DMs. All right, peace.